The Duluth Salvation Army welcomed new captains to town recently. Captains Anthony and Alicia Norden transferred to Duluth from the Army's Fergus Falls, Minnesota branch. Both are graduates of the Salvation Army Training College and met during their work within the Army. Joining us now is Cap Captain Anthony Norden of the Duluth Salvation Army. Welcome. And Thank you. we heard that you welcomed a baby shortly after. Um, <laughs> You, you came into town, so congratulations to you and your wife. Well, thank you so much. I would have joined you sooner if it wasn't for that. <laughs> well, it's fair to take some time for that. <laughs> Absolutely. So, thank you again for being here. My pleasure. Um, now, can you tell us a little bit about your role and what it entails as a captain of the, Army, of the Salvation Army? Oh, absolutely. So um, as a captain of the Salvation Army, I guess you could really think of it like an executive director position. So I'm there helping to oversee all the departments and programs with my wife. Um, I, we split the responsibilities as evenly as we can and I take over certain things and she does certain things, but it also involves being a pastor. So we're both the executive director and pastor of the Salvation Army. So we help in those capacities and we also do stuff like this where we get to talk to the community and just talk to, to you guys, fill you in. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about local needs since you arrived in Duluth? I think that is best summed up by when I sat down in Rotary, my first time visiting Rotary, someone asked me, what do you think about the housing crisis here? And my response was, what housing crisis? <laughs> and I quickly found out that Duluth has uh, some housing needs. So Rotary very quickly taught me to look into things. So I think that was one of my first things I noticed was the need for more housing and how the Salvation Army is already helping in that direction with mm -hmm. the 15 units we have and some of the rapid rehousing we do. Mm -hmm. Is it typical for officers to, to move around every four or five years so that they can kind of like bring new experience and, and new insights into a community? Oh, absolutely. So a lot of it's based on people who retire. So someone who has a lot of experience, they say they retire at a larger Salvation Army in a bigger position. You need someone who has experience to, to then take over because it's a big operation. You don't want to take someone fresh out of college and say, here's a big operation, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't really work. So a lot of times those moves are caused by people who retire. So four to six years is the average, but you know, it could be shorter, it could be longer. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm curious about what it looks like when you get started in a role like this in a new community. Um, you mentioned Rotary is, yep. was a great place where you could learn about the community's needs. Where else do you go to learn that critical information? Um, our advisory board actually. So the Salvation Army has an advisory board here in Duluth and it's something we're looking to grow. But our advisory board members are, are wonderful resources because they stay in between Salvation Army officers and they can, and they're community leaders, business leaders, so they have a direct connection. They know what the Salvation Army is doing. They know what their business is and the connections they have. So that's a quick way to learn what's going on. I love getting to visit uh, service clubs. I've been to Kiwanis. I just rejoined Rotary here. Well, I just rejoined the Rotary uh, here in Duluth with Duluth 25. I left the Fergus Falls one. So being in those service club organizations, um, getting invited to other groups, I, I really enjoy getting to speak with uh, other clubs um, whether it's Optimists, Alliance, they really fill me in on what's going on. And I'm able to respond at the Salvation Army by saying, okay, someone is telling me what's going on and catching me up to speed. Mm -hmm. Now we mentioned in the introduction that your wife is also a captain mm -hmm. in the Salvation Army. Is that, a, is that pretty typical for a husband and wife to move into a community and, and both be in those leadership positions and partners in ministry? I can't speak for the rest of the the world, mm -hmm. because Salvation Army is international, but here in the United States, it is um, actually a policy that Salvation Army couples, so if you're married, that both are um, Salvation Army officers. That way, when you do move, you know, your spouse moves with you for the same job and everything, and so it just makes it easier. Um, I, w I will say that uh, it is challenging to move if you've ever moved before, so even if you move with your spouse, there's still a lot that goes into it. Um, but it is quite common, and sometimes uh, they'll even split up Salvation Army officers. So like, say I would work in Duluth and she might work in Superior. There are, there are occasions where stuff like that does happen. Mm -hmm. And knowing how different this community is from Fergus Falls, even though we're in the same state, I, there's yep. a lot of commonalities where certainly all of our communities are different. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, um, what are the biggest differences that you've noticed thus far and things that you want to kind of start to tackle early on in your role? Well. The first thing I noticed is that I can actually go get coffee here. <laughs> That's the biggest difference. I never realized that from a small to a larger community again. But one of the other things is uh, making sure that there's space for, for youth activities. So like um, I was talking with Life 93 or, or yeah, 93.7 earlier, we were just talking about youth activities, um, making sure that there's stuff for the kids and the families who might need it so they can just drop in and might have some fun or have some planned activities for that so that youth have a, a place to go. 
Mm -hmm. Of course, we're getting into the season when the red kettle drives are going to start. How important is that to the Salvation Army and to the work that you do in local communities? It's massive. It makes up a huge section of our budget. So with, if we don't have those volunteers, we can't do everything else that we do. Um, we have so many different programs that rely on the funding that comes from kettles, mail appeal, white um, people dropping in. So during our Christmas season, we raise the majority of our funds. So if someone, someone has a time to volunteer an hour or two, we'd greatly appreciate it. If someone drops in a, a little into the kettle, or even this year we're trying something new. We're trying tap to give. So, you know, when you're at the, going to the gas station, they're like, oh, tap your card and you can pay for it. We're trying that at some of our kettles this year so they can just tap and give. If they say, well, I don't have cash, you got your card or your phone, you can tap and give. All right. That convenience, I imagine, will be great for a lot of people, and it's nice that you're able to start um, talking about that now because yep. holiday season is upon us. It is. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.